All right, I'm gonna be going over my development setup and all the tools and stuff that I use to code on a daily basis. So I'm gonna be starting with the terminal that I use. This is what it looks like. And this terminal is actually not the default terminal. I'm currently on Mac, not using the default one. As you can see right here, it is called iTerm2. Um, this is Mac specific, but all the other stuff should be generic and you can use no matter what operating system you're on. So that, the reason why I'm using that is it just comes with some nice improvements over the regular terminal. You can read it if you want to go through the features of iTerm2 on their website. It'll explain all the features it comes with. Uh, the one I usually like is to just have kind of like a toggle, easy toggle. Uh, you can have the tabs at the top where I can just toggle between. Uh, let's go into my documents project and I can flip through pretty easily. Now there might be some other terminals that do that as well. I'm not sure if the default terminal has that. There's other things like it can copy and paste easily and whatnot. So that's what I've stuck to. Now next thing I want to talk about is the color scheme. This is what's called Grovbox. Um, this is what it looks like. I'm using the dark mode. Um, and Grovbox is a color scheme that's generic. Here's the light version as well. So you can get this for pretty much anything you're using. Um, they specifically are doing this for Vim, but I took the colors and I'm using it for my iTerm. You could probably get it for Visual Studio Code, Atom, you know, any editor that you're using, Sublime, um, or pretty much any terminal if you wanted to color scheme it like this. Now, the second special thing about this terminal is I'm not using Bash. Um, so I'm using a shell called Fish Shell. So let me show you why I'm using this thing. So one of the reasons is when I type, it'll tell me when I'm doing something wrong. And it'll also autocomplete. So you see how I have this little thing right here? So I've typed DO and it's telling me I've previously typed this entire command. Would I like to use that? Um, and if I would, I can hit the right arrow and it'll autocomplete this for me. So now I can, you know, move around. And by the way, I'll show you how I just whip around like this. Um, and I can get rid of, maybe I only want to go to documents and then I see it in the documents. So the whole auto completion for that, this part is happening because of fish shell. Uh, the other thing is you'll notice there's some nice, just like coloring. So green and I don't, I don't know why that one's orange in particular. Um, so I like the coloring on it, syntax highlighting, and there's also a red version. So let's say I'm trying to CD into a folder that just straight does not exist. So I don't have this folder here. It won't let me CD into it. But if I CD into documents, you'll notice it's green because it knows that's a possible option. So that's one of my favorite things about fish shells, all these nice little features that you can get. So if you'd like to also get those things, you can download fish shell. And then I'm also using a framework called Oh My Fish, and uh, this sets some stuff up. I don't remember all this stuff. I set this up a while ago. Can't remember all the things it gives you. Probably lists in the README. Um, but let me show you guys. Here's my config file. I'll list this. This is kind of hard to read. Just the coloring. I don't have. I need to add a theme to my Vim. I kind of got rid of it. So this though. I'll put on GitHub if you'd like to see what my configuration is. This is it. There's nothing too special. Um, but this is a must. So for me, I use something called Vim. And so this turns on the Vim key bindings. I'm going to be talking more about Vim in a little bit as well. Um, but that's how you saw me. Now let's just CD there. So CD documents. What was it? Programming? Okay, there we go. So look at this giant string. So you can also see up here. It tells me what mode I'm in. If you're a Vim user, you'll know what that is. So I'm currently in insert mode, so I can type. And I hit escape. I'm now in normal mode, and I can do whatever I want, which includes skipping through characters, going to the beginning, going to the end, all that stuff. Um, so those, those are kind of the main things about the terminal. And actually, I don't use this terminal all that much anymore. And the reason for that is I'm pretty much always in this guy. So this particular editor is Visual Studio Code, and I'm pretty much spending all my time in this guy. And it has a terminal right here, and I just use this so it 
I have it hot bound. I just actually use the, the default key binding for that to pop it in and out. So whenever I'm coding, I'm like, all right, now I need to run it. Just pop it open and I'm good to go. So that's really what I do nowadays. So I won't even have iTerm up a lot of times. And again, it has, you know, this feature where you can add multiple terminals and switch between them. I actually tend to use a program called Tmux. Um, I'm actually not very good at Tmux and I don't do anything really special with it, but you can create these tabs at the bottom similar to um, how I was doing with iTerm and then I can switch between them. So I'm currently in this folder. I can go up, um, let's go up two and let's go here to our full stack folder. And then I can CD into packages and app. And then let's say I can open up a new terminal and then I can back at flex and then I can do whatever I want here. And now I'm back and basically I just toggle back and forth using key bindings. All right, so that's enough about the terminal. Let's talk about this editor right here. So Visual Studio Code um, is my main editor. I use the default theme with this guy, um, default dark anyway, so I don't have a special one. I just like the default one for that. Now the other thing is it might look a little different than the default dark is my curly braces here. And that's because of a plugin. So I'm gonna go through my plugins real quick. And this first guy is what's causing that. So it's something called bracket colorizer. Um, and what this plugin does is as you see, it matches up the color. So this bracket and this bracket pair up. So it colors them both yellow. This guy and this guy pair up so it's pink. It also does it for parentheses. So those two are yellow and these two to go together. So every pair of brackets or whatnot that go together or parentheses, it colors them the same color. So that's something I really like. So that's a really nice plugin. I'm using this GraphQL plugin. Uh, I don't have an example in this project, but this GraphQL plugin is just for syntax highlighting. If I have a GraphQL file open, uh, a dot GraphQL file open. So actually I can create one real quick. Let's go here. Um, we're going to say, let's call it schema.graphql. So if I say type mutation, and then I'm going to create shows, and that's going to return uh, a string. So you can see how it has some nice highlighting here of the colors, and you can see the different types and whatnot. That is because of this guy. All right, next one, prettier. Um, this is a absolute must for me. Um, any new computer I'm programming on, I pretty much have this installed first thing. What this does is if I have my code ugly, so this is currently not styled very well. If I save it, it'll format it very nicely. Um, and so basically it automatically formats all your codes. So this is absolute must. If you're not using Prettier, definitely check it out. Other thing, I'm using TSLint. I'm a TypeScript user now pretty much exclusively. So this is how I lint my code, and this plugin allows me to get linting um, in my editor so I can be able to see if there's red lines or whatnot. So like, um, so this is me trying to import a module that does not work. I can highlight over it, and you can see it has a TSLint warning for me, and it says Bob is not listed as a dependency. All right, we'll put that back, there we go. And then lastly, Vim. So not only do I have them key bindings in my terminal, I also have it in my editor. And that's if you ever seen my videos where I'm kind of just like hopping around, my cursor's at the top of the screen, now it's at the bottom, um, now it's cleaning the whole line and you know, all that jazz. And now I undo everything that I just did. Um, the speed at which I'm able to do that is because of the key bindings that uh, Vim gives me. And this is actually something I really recommend. If you're serious about programming, this is something I would recommend learning. It's something that is a very good long-term investment. It takes a little while to get used to, but then once you get used to it, your hands never leave the keyboard. So that's a nice thing. All the things that I'm doing right now, um, I'm not even touching the keyboard, or not the keyboard, the mouse at all. I'm only touching the keyboard. Um, so now I'm in insert mode, I'm doing all this stuff. And I pop out and I want to delete it all because I don't like it. All without touching my mouse and I'm just typing on my keyboard so it's a lot faster. So you'll get a lot of just gains of using this over time. 
Um, so if you're programming for a while, it definitely pays off to learn Vim. And the one Visual Studio Code I'm actually pretty happy with. Um, the emulator for this is actually pretty good. Uh, don't have any too many complaints. And also, there's a lot of people that are a lot better than me at Vim. I'm also, a, I would say, a pretty beginner user at Vim or intermediate. Um, but you can even get a lot of good gains from it just from not being the best. All right, so that's the main stuff in Visual Studio Code. Let's go over my settings as well. So I'm going to put this on GitHub as well so you guys can copy my settings if you want to. Let's pull this over. There we go. So let's close this and let's go into Zen mode. All right, so first off, I have a key binding for Vim. So this won't make sense unless you use Vim, but here I'm in normal mode. To get out of normal mode, the default key bound is escape. Um, and you'll notice my cursor also changes as well, but hitting escape every time is off like further away from my fingers. So instead of hitting escape, I rebind it to JK, which I can easily hit whenever I want to. And so that's the same as hitting escape. So that's how I do that. Um, recently, I actually changed this. So here are all my um, font levels. So I used to have the fonts up actually a little bit higher. And reason for that was I changed my resolution. So I actually recently just downloaded a program called RDM. And you'll notice my resolution is at 1280 times 720. So this allows me to get a uh, resolution that looks big and good for videos. Um, and I don't have to just jack up my fonts uh, for all the programs. So now I think this is pretty readable font wise. Let me know if you don't, uh, if you'd like it even bigger, I can do that. Um, but I can bump it up a little further here. But the resolution makes just everything bigger, including if I get out of Zen mode. Um, this is a little bit bigger to read also. Also, the zoom level helps as well. So that's how I was able to get uh, this left bar readable, increasing my resolution, and increasing my zoom level. Um, other stuff, this guy. Um, so whenever I'm programming, I prefer everything to reformat every time I save. So that's just, I messed up that. So if I hit save right now, it's now reformatting. Alternatively, you can do it every time you commit, or I can open up this panel and I can, uh, I think it's reformat, no, just format, there we go, format document. So there's the command panel. For me, it's, if you hit command, shift P, it brings it up, and I just can say format here, but I don't really prefer doing it that way. I prefer just automatically saving every time I save the file, so that's what that's doing. Here, this is excluding files. This is the default that comes with Visual Studio Code. I added node modules, so you don't actually see my node modules over here in the side because that's just kind of annoying. Um, and there's, I don't think I've ever wanted to open node modules in Visual Studio Code and it kind of just slows down things if I accidentally click on it and whatnot, so I just ignore it altogether. Uh, this is just tab sizing, and this is how you do language specific. So these languages, I set the tab size to two, uh, just I guess it's just preference um, This stuff so there's a mini map that you can have on the side. I don't really like it that much So I just take it off. So um, It's this thing right here I'm just gonna leave that to false. I Don't think I ever really use it. It's kind of gimmicky uh, Startup editor. Uh, that's whatever. This is just the file that, the name of the file that it's called whenever it creates a new file or it starts up um, I don't I actually don't even know why I have this here um, I could just keep the default. I'm just going to go ahead and kill that. All right, confirm drag and drop. Uh, this is whenever, this is a TypeScript setting whenever, or maybe it's a JavaScript works now, but it's whenever I move a file around. So if I go like that, it's going to ask me what I like to change um, the, the imports. And so I like this menu coming up because I just like to know when TypeScript does it or Visual Studio is going to do it before it actually does it. Like right here, I actually don't want it to. Um, and I'm just going to bring it back. Um, so allows me to have that and then this oops this guy is and let's go back into Zen mode um, actually I don't want to do Zen mode right now because I don't think the bottom it'll show so there's this little smiley guy right here I just turn him off because that is for tweeting and whatnot and I don't want to send feedback to Microsoft every time I code um, this was a suggestion that the Visual Studio Code actually asked me to do. They're like, hey, would you like your terminal to run faster? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, turn the setting on. 
I don't know. I haven't really noticed a difference. I just have that. Um, Emmet. So this Emmet is like this uh, program that you can use to uh, quickly write HTML. I don't really ever use it, and it kind of gets in my way when I'm auto-completing with these languages. So I just actually just turn it off. Um, sometimes it still comes up and it's annoying and it messes me up every time I do it, but whatever. Um, here I'm turning on, so I told you I like to use fish shell, and I'm able to use fish shell in the integrated uh, terminal here because I specified which shell I want. So here I said which shell, and then I put the path to the fish shell, and then I'm also using OSX, so I put OSX there. Uh, workbench, show tabs, um, that's just these things at the top. And then lastly, breadcrumbs. This is a new thing I'm trying out. This is in the newest Visual Studio code. Um, I'm liking it so far, it's pretty cool. So notice where I'm at. So I'm currently in source folder and components folder and center. And now you'll see, I also see the same thing at the top here. So source components center. So now what I can do is you'll notice there's also a text input field. So I can click on center and I can click on over here. So why the heck is this even useful? Well, when you can just click on it over here. Well, this is kind of big and annoying. So what I can do is I can actually close it and I can go into Zen mode. And, uh, oh, it doesn't show breadcrumbs. Oh no, here's breadcrumbs, I think. Yeah, so there we go. So now I can switch to stuff. I can go to center, I can go to my components. Let's go to the home screen. Um, I can pop back over here to center. And basically I can easily navigate just by these little breadcrumbs at the top, which I really like, and I can stay full screen in my code and don't have to have that giant thing over here. So that is it for, I think, Visual Studio Code. That's all the stuff that I use, and this is pretty much where I live. So I do all my stuff in Visual Studio Code, uh, my editor, and both any kind of terminal operations that I need to do. So I'll usually just have a Visual Studio Code open, and then also a, a Chrome, and then that's what I do most of my programming. I also use a lot of little extensions. I made a video on that, I'll link below if you're curious what extensions I use in Chrome. But that's pretty much my whole development setup. Um, I'm curious if you guys are um, always wondering how I can improve my setup, so if there's anything you see or would recommend to me, I'd love to hear in the comments below what you guys use or what recommend plugins or whatnot.